Welcome to Cooperation, Building Your Network, subtitled Being Your Best by Making Others Better Than You. Um, Cooperation is a term that I came along or came by, oh, I would say about a decade ago, a little bit more actually, about 12 years ago. Um, and it related to actually um, some competitions, robotic competitions. I knew some young people that were participating and I was asking them about the competition and one of them mentioned to me the term cooperation. And I asked them a few more questions about it and I guess at these these competitions because you know at the time you know robotics still relatively new um, a lot of advancements were being made but those advancements that were being made were being made because uh, folks helped each other get through their problems. And in fact, um, at these robotic competitions, you were actually rewarded for helping other teams overcoming you know, software or technical obstacles and improving on their systems. And that really, really sunk in when I heard that. I thought, wow, how relevant that is, how, 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 how important that is, um, you know, just in life in general. And I really embraced that and actually introduced it to um, the state chapter that I was the chapter president of um, and as a member um, over the years. And it was it, it's continues to be a theme that has come back up inside that chapter. And really, it became sort of kind of I wouldn't even call it a mission statement, but it became kind of a sort of a, sort of the mission of, of our, our work is to try to help others and improve others. And I wanted to use, I wanted to share this with you as it relates to uh, building your network because truly that's what I've seen happen. I mean, it is truly a vehicle and a tool and a mindset that absolutely does help us build our network. And it does truly, um, it's, it's made me better uh, by helping to make others better. And I absolutely have experienced that in my career. And I think that uh, whether you are new, I'm coming into the profession, or, or whether you've been there for a while, it will help you. But if you are new coming into the pre profession, I tell you what, I really wish I would have really thought this way um, early on. In fact, I probably had sort of the, the opposite mentality early on, primarily because, um, you know, I, I think I grew up in sports and um, I was used to working hard to be the best. And that was that was just that was a drive. That was a mindset to be the best. But I can tell you over the years that thinking has shifted quite a bit. In fact, uh, um, I could probably tell you right now that, you know, it is not my drive, quote, to be the best. Um, you know, I'm trying. It, it's actually my drive to be at my best and continue to continue to get better. And so I hope that this little tool or competition will sink for you like it did for me and that you'll take it from wherever you are in your career and that you'll be able to build on it. This is a relatively short presentation, but again, I, I think it's a powerful presentation or lecture. I'm going to use an illustration. I, I use, I've said this hundreds and hundreds of times, and some of you, if you've been around me long enough, you've heard me say it. Um, but I think of it like, uh, like using the illustration of basketball. You know, if you're playing against a four-year-old, um, and I'm pretty sure almost any four-year-old, um, if you were to play basketball against a four-year-old, you can be pretty sloppy, and you can kind of goof around, and you can play around, and you're, you're not going to improve your skill sets at all. Um, you're going to basically be able to run circles around that four-year-old, and, you know, and, and, and really, it's going to get boring, maybe fun if it's a grandchild or a child or something like that, but truly, it, it's, not, it's not competitive, and there's really no improvement uh, that you're going to make. Um, and I'm not, I'm, I'm please uh, excuse, I'm not saying that work, you know, we have people that work with that, that work like four-year-olds or have, uh, that's the way it is at work. I'm just using it illustratively. But if you play someone with basic skills, someone who has, they're, they're a little, you know, they're a little better, um, you know, they, they, they have, they have some physical attributes, you know, they have some dribbling attributes, they can shoot a little bit. Um, but yet, you're still probably going to be a lot better based on your experience and you know, your skill sets and you, you know, you're not going to have to work quite that hard. I say here, you can even keep using, you can use your weak hand to dribble. You know, uh, if that, for those of you who play basketball like me, I'm very right handed. And when I go to the left hand, who knows what's going to happen, but I, I can, I can do it. I just probably not very good at it. But if you're playing against someone who has real basic skills, you can probably, you know, play around a little bit more and maybe 
again, you know, you would dominate um, most of the time, but yet you're really not going to, again, improve your skills all that much. But if you take it to the next level and you play someone that's equally skilled as you, well, now it changes things. You have to get a little more serious. Um, you have to use uh, your skill sets, you know, more optimally. And you really have to, you know, it, it's just going to be one of those things where it's going to be a lot of give and take. And you will, you will improve. I mean, you'll get better. But again, if a person is equally as good as you, they're really not going to, you're not going to learn much from them, um, you know, and they're not going to learn a whole lot from you. Uh, you and you are going to get better slowly, but you're going to basically uh, have, you know, pretty equal competition. I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun and you'll enjoy it. But as far as improvement goes, you know, it'll be slow and with a lot of time, but it's probably not going to be a lot of improvement. And then you go to the next level. Um, you play some of this better than you. Uh, someone that has a lot of skill sets, you know, someone that has, is well practiced. Um, you know, and I like to think that when you work with people who are really good at what they do, you learn from them and you learn a lot from them, especially if they're mentor teacher types and they, and they share with you things and you can, you can try to assimilate those skill sets into your toolbox. And truly though, if you do play almost at, at, at any level with anything, someone who is, who is better, I have some more experience or, you know, just has, you know, better skill sets, it's going to make you work harder. It's, it's going to make you have to try to really, really, really improve. And you have to be very, very focused or much more focused, I should say. Um, and that's really sort of the essence of cooperation. The essence of cooperation is trying not to be the best in the room. The essence of competition is to make, help make others better than you and learn from them. I can tell you over the years, uh, I have learned so much from folks you know, and it's sort of it's sort of a reciprocating relationship. You know, you teach them, and they, they naturally want to share with you, you know, what they're learning and how they're growing. Uh, that has been true of this course. I and mean, as I work with you all out there, there is no doubt that as you learn, I learn, and that has been one of the benefits of stepping into and being in this role. So it's very. This is. I think this is kind of the sweet spot. Of where we want to live our professional careers and there's that word again professional careers if you want to be an amateur then be the smartest person in the room and always play people and work with people that are you know don't develop other folks basically let them sort of stay stagnant in their skill sets and their talent and it'll be the status quo and i would like to tell you or I like to think that the status quo really it's it's very difficult these days to hold on to the status quo and think it's going to last a long time. But let's talk about some of the, the benefits of, of this and let's look at this in just a little different little different perspective with a little different verbiage. Because what, what happens when you do this? What are some of the, the things that occur when you actually do apply cooperation? And the first thing is, you know, you're going to be growing others in and you'll be growing them up. This is a natural outgrowth of cooperation. You know, rather than basically not getting people educated and not, you know, kind of creating good development plans for folks. Uh, if you start doing that, what's going to happen is you're going to start have advocates. There'll be people who will help you advocate because they will begin to understand or relate to some of the issues you're challenged with and vice versa. Um, they're going to become go-to people. Uh, you can really truly start to delegate things to other folks. And, and again, as they become more capable, what it does is it frees you up. Um, it allows you to expand to other areas. And hopefully, if you have synergy with the folks you're working with, they understand that. They understand that their skill sets are growing, your skill sets are growing. And what that is, that's really expanding, um, you know, the opportunities for everybody. Um, it's not all, just because you get new skill sets doesn't actually always mean it's going to be additional responsibility work. Uh, what I have seen is very often what we do is as we grow our skill sets and we grow our knowledge and we grow um, our experiences, we're actually able to do more with less. We become more efficient. You know, it's like we've seen that problem before kind of a thing, or we put policies and processes in place to make things more efficient. And I'd like to think that, that, that we have the capacity to do that. We, you know, again, we organize ourselves better and we organize the tools better. We organize the keys better. We organize the plans better. You know, we organize the data and the work order system better. You know, we, cre we create, you know, better communication vehicles using smartphones. You know, we do all kinds of things that allow us to not really make the day 
harder by adding just more work, but we try to make the days more seamless so we're more productive. And that's been proved out so many times in so many industries that when you look at your processes and your systems, your people and your skill sets and resources, the people become can become very much more productive. You can only imagine how much more we get done and how much more we're able to do because of technology. I mean, simply the computer, the internet, um, you know, communications has made us much, much more productive than it ever has been historically. If we know how, if we use those tool sets and use those skills and processes and we keep improving on them. You know, it, in a big way, it lays the foundation for succession planning. Uh, I know a lot of you are thinking, well, I'm not looking to go anywhere right yet. You know, I, I, I have another 10, 15, 20, 30 years, maybe even, you know, you have 40 years left in your career and you're not looking to go anywhere. Well, if you have 40 years, you're probably looking to advance. But, but again, it's important to lay down the foundations of succession planning. Um, you know, it, it, uh, it, it just, it's so important that you can be replaced by not just one person, but by multiple folks. And I say that, replace, and that may bring fear to you, but it shouldn't. I mean, I really think that, you know, we should be fearless when it comes to growing others up and in. And, you know, and again, as we'll talk to in a moment, out. But uh, the thing is, is that it, we should be fearless about this. I think there was a day... And there's probably a good reason for it, maybe, when, when there were fewer jobs and there's a lot of competition, especially with the baby boomers back in the, you know, 60s and really the 70s. Um, there they was really a more of a culture of not sharing things and keeping secrets to their, ourselves because we were afraid that if somebody knew what we knew, they would take our job. I don't know that we ha should have that fear anymore. There's just too much expansion going on. We have too much makeup and catch-up work to do. There's just so much to be done. I don't believe the pie is being having to be carved up in more pieces i believe the pie is growing you know this is evidence through technology this is evidence through regulation this is evidence through the shift from inpatient to outpatient um, there are so many evidences that our work is expanding and we need to expand along with it and with that it, it advances the work um, you know, the work needs to advance. We have lots of opportunities in front of us. You know, we, we've heard for several years now, and we're going to keep hearing about, you know, the opportunities with energy, you know, the opportunities with, you know, BIM. Uh, I think I've mentioned before, there's growing opportunities. It may take a while with, you know, power over Ethernet. Um, you know, there are opportunities working with internet and, I'm sorry, IT infrastructure in, in projects. It just goes on and on and on. There are many, many, many opportunities you know, that we will be challenged with. And I'm not saying these are opportunities that, you know, whether we want to or not, we need to embrace these so that we can continue to, you know, stay current and stay relative with what's going on in our profession. And of course, it improves service and, and safety. That kind of goes without saying, you know, as others become, grow their, um, as they grow, they become more critical thinkers. They become more aware of what's going on around them. And very often, they will bring issues to you because they recognize them and you know, you'll nip things earlier. And that really is you know, um, a reality what happens as people grow. I, I, have, I know you yourselves, I'm sure as you have, I've heard you tell me this, as you have gone through this program, I have a number of folks that have gotten back to me and said that I, 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 I told my director or I told my manager or I told my administrator something that I learned that we weren't doing that we needed to do. Now, very often it, it, it became additional responsibility for you because you spoke up and uh, in some cases that resulted in maybe a promotion or, but sometimes it maybe just promoted as a, you know, another uh, role or responsibility. But at the same time though, that's what I'm talking about. It's when you recognize and then, and then and folks grow, they bring you issues. Now this will challenge you. It will challenge you as a leader because, you know, it's a good thing that they're bringing it to you and you have to manage that and you have to be very careful not to look at it as bringing you problems. It's bringing you opportunities. So growing others in and up, I think is key uh, to building your internal network, if you will, and your internal advocates. And it's very, very powerful for your career. Now growing others out, and this is really where I think is very interesting. Um, a lot of this is driven by our egos, you know, again, and our fears, you know, we're afraid to, to, to sometimes, uh, I, I think we get a little concerned about the possibility of losing talent. Um, you know, we get, we get a little fearful about, uh, someone that might quote, want our job kind of a thing. Um, and I think 
I'm not saying those fears are unfounded, but I think that the really the reality is is that yes, you may lose talent, and talent may go on and um, you know um, and leave your organization or leave you know leave you as under employment. Um, but really, I think the benefit in the long run greatly outweighs the short-term discomforts. Um, I truly believe that the, that the people behind um, that grow out, uh, others step up when you have an atmosphere or an environment of cooperation. And truly, it expands your resources. Um, very simply, I mean, you can make a phone call and you can get something that you just don't have um, or an email or otherwise. And a lot of us experience that even like through ASHI. ASHI is a, is a network for us in the listserv. But it's so much better. I've used the listserv, but I tell you what, very often I will call a very specific person who I know has has a very specific understanding or, or or as a resource. And as my network has grown and expands, it's just great the resources that are that I'm able to reach out to. Um, I remember one time I, I just very quickly needed a, a decontamination tent. I needed a uh, um, um, for a project. And um, I, I called a friend and he said, that one, yeah, sure, come get it. In fact, I think he brought it to me, took him to lunch. And so, you know, things like that happens. It also, again, ex along the same lines, it expands your industry contacts. And these are contacts that can stretch out across the country or, you know, your region. But very valuable. Um, and I made here, it's, it's nice if you ever uh, need a reference. Um, again, we're on a journey here. We all don't necessarily know what's going to happen within our organizations or institutions. Um, there's all kinds of things that go on anymore. And it is just great to be able to say, hey, you know, and you can choose your references um, from different industries and from different areas and regions. It's just really, really great to have, uh, you know, folks saying, yeah, sure, I'll be a reference for you. It also makes for a great time at conferences. Um, a conferences, especially the, the, the annual conferences, whether it's for our chapters or for it's for the national conference, it really is meeting friends. Um, that's one of the big reasons why folks go is to see old friends, catch up on how they've been doing. Um, for years now, I, I've seen people that I met, you know, you know, 15, 20 years ago that we see each other, say hi, and it's like, like, you know, old friends just catching up on how things are going. And it's interesting to talk to folks because I have found, you know, over those years, they, they, they don't stay at the same place. I mean, they'll be over the years, you know, over the last 15, 20 years, they will have been at two, three, maybe even four different places over those years. In some cases, they're in the same place and, and still, you know, expanding where they are. But in many cases, more times than not, as I talk to people at conferences, they've made some changes especially in jobs and job titles, if not uh, locations and regions of the country. So, you know, that, that, that's a real advantage of growing others out is that there, you, you get to meet up and you get to catch up. And it, I find it, again, being extremely valuable. And again, it's one, of, it's, it's one of those things where as time goes on, it becomes more rich and it becomes more valuable. So in summary, when it comes to cooperation, got to keep the big picture in mind. By growing others, our professional growth is guaranteed. And, and I'm serious about that. If you, if you grow others, your growth will happen. It, it just will be a natural outcome. And you look back over five and 10 and 15 years, and you know, you'll find 20, 30 years, and you'll find just how people all over um, that you have impacted and that have impacted you as a direct result. So I really, again, I, I hope that when it comes to you, where, especially if you're starting your career, uh, that you start this from day one. You know, the, the theme of cooperation becomes just really a core value for you in this profession of healthcare facilities leadership.